Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my lecture series on quantum statistics. The previous video, in the previous video, I discussed distinguishable particles, or what that means to say that they're distinguishable, to say that they're identical, and what does inter interacting and non-interacting mean. So now I'm going to move on to the meaning of classical particles, bosons, and fermions. And this is lecture number four, or this is tutorial video number four. So this is basically applying the terminology I used in the previous video. So let's first of all talk about classical particles. Classical particles are distinguishable. So that means you can put a label on each of the particles and say which is which. So let's say we have A, B, C and D. We can say which one's A, which one's B and so on. And we can follow that particular particle or whatever it is throughout time. They are non-interacting. The point that means is that you can put as many particles as you want into any state. So there is no restriction on the number of particles per state. And that is because they are non-interacting. So this property leads to this property. Whereas this property here is, is uh, on its own, we'll say, or it's independent of the other properties. So classical particles are distinguishable, non-interacting, and there is no restriction on the number of particles per state. Contrast that then with bosons. Bosons are indistinguishable particles. They are non-interacting, and because they are non-interacting, once again, there is no restriction on the number of particles per state. However, this time they are indistinguishable. So the contrast between bosons and classical particles is that bosons are indistinguishable, whereas classical particles are distinguishable. So that means, as you should know at this stage, that the multiplicity of classical particles is greater than the multiplicity of bosons. And that's because there are more ways of arranging distinguishable particles than there are of arranging indistinguishable, indistinguishable particles. So for example, if we had four bosons, namely A, A, A and A, there's only one way of arranging those four bosons. In other words, you can, you, no matter what way you rearrange that, you'll still get the same state. However, if it was A, B, and C, if it was A, B, C, and D like it is up here, then there are 24 ways of arranging it. All right, which I've discussed, uh, or which I will excuse me, discuss in um, in a future video. But the point is that when they are identical, the number of uh, possible rearrangements or combinations, permutations, or whatever it is, is greater, or the multiplicity is greater, or the the entropy is greater. And finally then to move on to fermions. Fermions are indistinguishable particles just like bosons. So of course that means that the multiplicity is lower than that, uh, well in that, that part of the multiplicity is lower than that of classical particles. They are however interacting versus non-interacting for bosons. Okay, they are interacting particles. And that leads on to the, this, that leads on to the next property which is that you can only get one particle per state. Whereas when they are non-interacting particles, we get no restriction on the number of particles per state. So this, of course, this property here is going to reduce the multiplicity of fermions. So you, what, we, what you would expect is as follows. You would expect that classical particles have the largest mul multiplicity. You'd expect that bosons have the second largest multiplicity. And you would expect that fermions have the smallest multiplicity. Now we'll see what that we'll see if that is the case in, in a future video. So just before I before I go, I want to um, just to say this once more. I did say it in a previous video, but I think this is important. Okay, so we I want to talk about very quickly or very briefly what it means to say that they're interacting versus non-interacting, or what is the implication. So the implication is as follows: If particles are non-interacting, and let's say we have G sub S states, that's the first, the second, that's the third state, and we have N sub S particles. Okay, so let's say this is the first one, and that's the second particle, and that's the third particle, plus the whole way up to the Sth particle, equals N sub S particles, right? So the first particle comes along and it says, well, I can go into any one of these G sub S states. So that's what he does. He goes into any one of them. So he will have G sub S possible places to go. But because 
what the first particle does is independent of what the second particle does, well the second particle will do the same. He can go anywhere he likes, and the third, and the fourth, the whole way up to the sth particle. Okay, each of them will have g sub s, uh, different places to go. Now this contrasts with, that, that is, excuse me, for bosons and for classical particles. But this contrasts for, for fermions, say n sub s is equal to the first, plus the second, up to the sth, sth state. Okay, so here are my states. There's g sub s, there's the first state, the second, the third, the fourth, the whole way up to the g sub s, or the sth state, actually, I suppose it would really be, wouldn't it? Anyway, so the first particle comes along, and he can go anywhere he likes. So he's going to have g sub s places to go. However, if, let's say, for example, he goes in, let's say it's, let's say this is where the first particle goes. He occupies right in here. Well, that means the second particle or any of the remaining s s minus one particles cannot go into this box, so they have s minus or g sub s minus one places to go. And then let's say the second particle goes here. Then the next particle is going to have g sub s minus two possibilities and so on. So you're you're as you're probably be able to see, you're going to have a g sub s factorial somewhere in the uh, the multiplicity function. But that's the point. That's the that's the. Uh, the result of them being interacting versus them being non-interacting. And I'll discuss this more at a later stage. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel and if you're in a good mood, please click an ad. Bye bye.